Jesse, hey, hey, just calm down. It's okay. You're right. It's okay. Everything will be okay. Yeah. I just need one of these. Pills? You mean you really are taking drugs? I need them. Jesse, give me those. I need them back. I have to sing. Jesse, you can't sing tonight. Yes, I can. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Welcome back to GMA. Well, can you even call yourself a millennial if Jesse Spano's Saved by the Bell caffeine pills spiral didn't leave a lasting impression on your psyche? Well, we'll talk more about Jesse in just a moment with our next guest here. Joining us now is entrepreneur, podcaster, and author of One in a Millennial on Friendship, Feelings, Fangirls, and Fitting in, Kate Kennedy. Kate, good morning. It's great to have good you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So this isn't quite a memoir. So how did you get the idea for this book? Yeah, it's a collection of essays that really sits at the intersection of two experiences, being a millennial and being a female, and kind of a lot of misunderstandings having to do with the two. And per the generational piece, I wanted to kind of examine how media and pop culture makes us a product of our time. But in our girlhood, so often being interested in that type of pop culture and media, it's written off as frivolous or unimportant or insignificant. And I kind of wanted to reclaim it and argue for its importance. I love that you're talking about this. All, all of us here are millennials. So I was just reading it and I was taking this trip down memory lane, just that. reading it. It's so nice. You talk about this idea of a Jesse Spano culture. Mm -hmm. Why do you think she resonated so much? So much so that you're still talking about it even today. I mean, bless her fast beating heart. I, she was having a lot of time there. Uh, you know, I was rewatching a lot of my favorite programming while I was writing the book. And when I rewatched Saved by the Bell, I really liked Jessie, but my memory of her was she was kind of unlikable, mm -hmm. stick in the mud, a little uptight. But that doesn't sound like me now. But as a kid, I was like, oh, enough about women's rights. Like, let's go back to Malibu Sands, you know? Um, but now, like, she was making really good points. And I realized how kind of manipulative the laugh track of those live studio audience shows was, because it's telling you who's a punchline and who's making a good point. And Jesse would say something brilliant about feminism, but Slater would, you know, say, go back into the kitchen, the audience roars. She'd say, oh, you're a sexist pig, nothing. And then he'd say, oink, oink, baby cracking up. And so it was kind of teaching me at a young age wow. who was likable, who was funny, mm -hmm. and who was the butt of the joke. And um, I just thought it was interesting thinking through, you know, who's in the writer's room? Who's telling girls' experiences? Who's explaining what a feminist looks like? And most of the writers were adult men writing about high schoolers' experiences. And I just thought that was an interesting thing to you go back through. Right. You certainly don't think about that when you're a kid who's writing this stuff. And yeah. your perspective does change as you become an adult. Let's talk about also your podcast, Be There in Five. Um, with this and the book, you talk about the things that people obsess over. What are some of these things? You know, I think growing up uh, in liking Top 40 music and American Girl dolls and Barbie and boy band music, kind of things of, of mass culture. You're often told they're not of the highest taste or the most sophisticated, but they can be really impactful in your life. And the whole book is kind of arguing for how great depths can come from surface level interests and how, you know, when I was on AOL Instant Messenger on AIM, OA messages of like email My quotes. Gosh, AIM. Yes. You know? <laughs> it's like I could roll my eyes and be like, oh, I was such a stupid kid. Or I could realize I was learning to curate an online persona that I carried into my career. I think I learned to wordsmith on AOL Instant Messenger in ways I kind of didn't in school with colloquial speech. And um, yeah, passive aggressively posting OA messages to boys with email lyrics was just, it was a rite of passage, I think. <laughs> so for people who don't know, this journey started out with a doormat, turn off yes. your curling iron. Um, and you also get real about some of the privileges that led to your success in this book. Yes, I had a major girl boss era, which is great. But I also was reading a lot of inspirational quotes and like self-help books that talked about you know, she believes she could, so she did, and go after your dream, which absolutely. But it's also important to caveat what is necessary to make that dream absolutely. possible. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.